Welcome everyone, this is Pilot Needles, and you're listening to Locho Players News, where we take a look at the latest news of Locho and hear Locho Players. And this week we have with us Gary Adwin. Hi hi! And Sans Winda. Hello. Hello there, and this was a slow week. Oh yeah, for there... kind of everybody. It's kind of a vacation yeah. week. Yeah, it was mainly a vacation week where everybody was at Stanley Stone Gains and a lot of other places off. So we had no Lotro Beacon this week. It took a week off. But of course, we still have store sales. So Terry Adwin, what's on sale this week? Um... tell you in a minute when i get there <laughs> uh we are on our final week of yule savings it is 35 percent off housing rates 50 percent off cosmetic outfit slots including number eight finally what it's on sale this time it is on sale and i have no point yes oh man <laughs> i have some saved though and i've been waiting for it to go on sale so i'm still kind yes, of excited it is on sale, 50 percent off and 75% off stat tomes now through January 2nd. And then you can become legendary and get a bunch of legendary junk. The 20% off the legendary level cap increase, legendary stat upgrade, relic packs, legacies, legendary slot unlocks, and legendary tier upgrades now through January 2nd. Blah. And the weekly coupon gets you a free battle potion of restoration with the coupon code RESTOREME now through December 26th. There's no coupon I never use. <laughs> I don't use those potions. I have them sitting. They're taking up space in my inventory. The ones I get from the Hobbit presents. Right. Yeah. There is that. Let's then head into our site news. And this week we have where we're in Middle Earth is Emeraldina number thirty-five. First of all, last week they were in Kill. The- Kivil Zahar in Forhel, which is a real fun place with lots of undead. And sometimes a roving threat, right? Or am I thinking of the wrong place? Is there... I don't remember there being a roving threat there, but then I don't think I've memorized all their locations, despite the fact that you've taken me through there a couple of times recently. This week, uh, she's liking nope. cold places lately. No roving threat there. Okay. Yeah, that does look cold again. Yeah. She just likes things with nice, cool... What's that time everything. up here? Yeah, I guess you got the point. Occasionally, I like to be reminded that there are times of the year when it's not frigid. But alas, I've never been a winter person. So that's where in Middle Earth is Emeraldina number 35. So let's head into our new player question. So, given the bonuses this week, which crafting profession do you think is most useful and why? Interesting question. I'm sure everybody has their own little opinion on this. Now... If we're talking about a new player, I know a lot of people think, well, if you're a new player, maybe you're going to be wanting something like Explorer, where you just gather lots of materials, don't worry about actually crafting anything, and sell all the materials for gold. That makes sense. But I've never been on that particular wavelength, but I know a lot of people like to give that little piece of advice is because they don't like crafting, but I might as well pick up all the stuff and sell it. And of course, Explorer has the thing where there are two significant gathering professions, which is why they like that particular one. Oh, I see Skarn! Gather it! Oh, I see Wood! Gather it! Fair. Of course, my personal favorite is 
cook, but if you're thinking from the point of view of making permanent items that are useful and being in crafting guilds and all such stuff like that, then cook is pretty useless for that. And so of what course, is cook useful for, Pine? Cook is useful for, well, making food, of course. And the food is useful for regeneration. It helps you to regenerate health. And it could, there's also food that increases your stats. And also that could help you to resist diseases and stuff like that better. And coffee! Oh, and of course, cough. Oh, yeah, we can't forget coffee to make you run faster. Uh, so consuming food is a good thing, but it is consumable, so you have to keep crafting it. So you Correct. have to keep crafting the stuff, yes. And it doesn't last for long periods of time either, usually. Yeah, but, well, it usually... Let's see, the... I think these shortest one is five minutes and then the actually I think they've increased the shorter ones to ten minutes so that be longer than crams. <laughs> but the but I think it's ten minutes, fifteen minutes for the critter stuff. And I think it's twenty slash thirty minutes for the for the stat boost ones and stuff like that. So you have so it's useful in that department in in that you could use it for all various things like that. But so basically before a hard use. battle or string of battles or before you need to run for a while. Yeah, things like that. So that's sort of my my favorite one to use. But otherwise, some people like to try to take one that fits their class. Sort of so That was what I did with Terry. Terry's actually a weaponsmith. Right, because because yeah, she's I'm a sure champion, uh huh. Right, because because champion, I wanted to be able to make my own weapons. Terry Adwin has not progressed in crafting past Westham net. Did she need to? No, because I never was going to get her gilded, so she can't make the allies. <laughs> so yeah, no, she's she's she stopped at it tier nine. They had they've added like three more crafting tiers since then. I I do not I don't do crafting. Um, actually I do, I do the cooking cause I really like the fact that for cooking and farming, you can, you are in control of your own materials. You don't have to go that. See, some people like going out and scouring the landscape and harvesting bits of scarring and branches and stuff like that. I am not one of those people. I'll pick it up if it's, if I can and it's there, but I'm not going to go hunting for it. And really in order to do, especially the higher tiers, you really have to hunt for it and it can take you out of your way yeah. and it's just too much of a pain to keep up with. So right. is it, uh, is I it stopped that, doing do, crafting. Or but I like four or five. Instances, but I don't think you like those books. either. <laughs> do you have then like any scholars who are like focused on farming and crafting dyes? Uh, my what, my single scholar is uh, Thoriadoc who is uh, stuck in Moria. <laughs> so not quite to oh, being able to get him. all of the he's he was he was my uh uh valard character <laughs> for the for morgul so he's actually he's stuck in the bjorning house right now so he went from moria to the bjorning house yeah he went from level 51 to level 120 um, nice but he's a guardian so uh yeah he's he's my only guardian and he's my only scholar and yeah, he's he's mothballed for a while. Fair. I was yeah, just debating this because I was starting characters on a different server, um, and trying to decide. Okay, so which which crafting profession should they be, and why? And, and at high level, the time I kept a spreadsheet of which of my characters was what. Um, I don't do that anymore. Right. Well, I was trying to think, because at high levels, you can't really craft your own armor very well anymore. It gets really expensive. Uh And it's replaced so fast. Uh Uh-huh. And you don't really craft your own weapons anymore, because you have your level 100 LI. Uh Uh-huh. And... Yeah. So, there you go. So far, I made a scholar, because I wanted dyes and scrolls. And potions. I'll tell you why my burglar is a cook. 
My burglar is a cook specifically so that she can make booze for the rift run. <laughs> because when we got there, my character was the one who passed out the handcrafted uh, ale. Nice. And we went through that run. My my character, um, every time she sobered up, took another drink. I had a stack of 50, and I went through about half of it, probably. Nice. Yeah, so I made a scholar, a jeweler, and a yeoman. And they're all going to produce consumables and, like, pocket items and hunter books and stuff. So. But okay. I don't know if they're actually the most useful professions. They were just the three that I was like, you know, these three can do pretty depends. much everything that it I need them to do. all depends on your definition. Of you. True. Do you really need the best gear, or is something you craft going to be good enough to get you to the next point? But you're right, it is super expensive. It's it, it's ridiculously hard to try and raise those tiers, because yeah. um, I went on a tear recently with Sarissa trying to get her tailoring up. I don't know why, I just <laughs> tailoring up to par with what her farming and cooking is at, which I think is uh, tier 8 or 9. She's pretty close to where she should be for a level 100 and make your own or you can't make your own leathers so i had to figure out who in my who of my alts can make the turn the hides into leathers and then who has what in their bag and yeah so that was half a day that i spent rotating through alts and that's just one of the nice things that titan bar is good for because titan bar keeps track of all that inventory crap um does Sirsa so still popping... need hides? I just remembered. Uh, probably for the... If she's good for now. She needs the next tier, actually. She's up to an Orient here for tailoring, okay. which I don't have the hides for. But she's questing in that region, so she'll end up getting them. Cool. I have, I have a bunch of alts questing in, level, in the level 100 range right now, which is weird for me because nobody's up to Mordor but they're all like right there um I, my my closest to getting to Mordor is the squishy runekeeper who can't actually get through the quest that she needs to do because she keeps getting splatted every time she goes over there and then I think the one after that is um Actually, it's Sarissa now, because she's actually made it to Central Gondor, and then followed closely by my Hunter, and then Challenge Mini. Okay. And then how, whichever of my Valard alts who are not... <laughs> they got Valard to, to go back and do old content. <laughs> <laughs> I have at least two of those. Um, And then Fauridoc technically is past Mordor, but I don't know what I'm doing with him yet, because supposed to only be playing him with Trish, so uh, yeah, Mothballed in the Bjorning who's Fair. But I do have a gilded cook who is very slowly working his way up through the guild ranks of cooking. Are there any like, good guild recipes for cooking? I have no idea, because he's only, he's still apprentice. Oh, okay. That's yeah. it's other champion. Yeah. Fair. Uh, Poor Al. <laughs> I believe that I've stopped trying to worry about the guild on my cook because I said, okay, I know. it was just more annoying to level up in the guild with a cook than it was to than anything you gained. It might be a little bit easier now that with a crafting carry-all. You have the carry crafting carry-all, so you can put all that junk in there. But even without that, I mean, you dedicate your inventory to cooking, and then you and then you have to remember to log in and do the cooking, which is kind of where I fail <laughs> at doing any guild stuff, because I don't lo just log in the crafters regularly enough to do it. My cook on Landerhall filled three large crafting carry-alls. <laughs> That's crazy now. I was like, well, no wonder she had no inventory space and no vault space, and I had no house storage space and was running out of my personal kin house storage space because I was I storing think, all this stuff. I think other champion would probably do two of the large ones. Fair. I expected her to fill two, but I didn't expect the third. I've got, like, two empty slots in it. I was like, what? 
LOL. And I thought I was that I was insane buying the buying a medium and a large for my for my warden or Langeville. <laughs> yeah, my cook should probably sell some stuff. But anyway. Thank you for answering my question. You're welcome. We need cosmetics carry alls, that's what we need. Ooh, that would be cool. <laughs> that would like delete the need for three of my alts. <laughs> but then they could go cra- go questing again instead of just like standing around carrying full inventories of Oh no, see I created cosmetics. my two cosmetic alts specifically to, to do nothing other than be be storage alts. That's that's why A they're named Storage and Mannequin and B they're captains. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Mine might have to get a profession and like level up to where they can summon people and go stand in hard to get to locations. <laughs> Let's send it to our weekend Lotro and Terry Adwin, what were you up to? Um, not lots actually, because as this was a slow week for the SSG folks, it was a slow week for me. Um However, I did, I remember I talked last week about Terry's quest log being totally full. Um, it turns out that a, about 10 of those were just quests that needed turning in that I never got around to turning in because they were in weird, out of the way. Like, I had three quests from when we ran the rift that I never went back and turned in. And I'm like, what the heck is up with that? So <laughs> I burned through some mithrils so I could do those turn-ins. Um and freed up 18 whole quest slots. Yay! Nice! And then, yeah, so with that newly clean quest log, I mean, it's not totally clean, but it's... it's. Um, I've only got 42 of 60 slots taken up with, with quests. So it left me 18 whole free slots! Um, Terry Adwin and friends quested through the Morgul Vale. Uh, met up with an old friend, which was awesome, because it's nice to see um, certain people up and walking around after things didn't look so good for them the last time we saw him and we actually we finished the black book chapter we actually got some answers in the black book of mordor that didn't lead to bunches of more questions i was so excited um it's it's probably and i actually think it was probably our longest interlude to date because usually we we got to the point and i was expecting gandalf to say okay i can't read anymore but no we got to go further and listen to a really cool story um it was a little bit depressing, but yeah, um, but it was still and pretty then, cool. And then, and then we got sent to go to go scout the the gate, the the main gate to Minas Morgul, which or yeah to to Minas Ithil, which I had found that spot in beta. Of course, the Sable Master's not there anymore; they moved it to the other side of the city. Um, but we went up there, and that's it's the way that I knew because I had done that in beta. And we get up there, and of course it's, hey, trolls, love luck, friends. And the rare Mordor chest is still there. Um, so we kind of crept around to the side, and I noticed that there was a lore master and a minstrel. Well, we noticed the lore master because the lore master came up and got the chest, and I had a bear in the face. <laughs> Which is, you either know it's a Bjorning or a lore master, and the bear's name said ally of whatever the lore master's name was so oh he's the lore master and i said let's poke the trolls and finally really didn't want to but <laughs> he made us eat first and everything he made yes. us eat food and stuff and, and so i used to hope token and some scrolls thing. that were in my inventory and i said okay we're well, I'm, I'm gonna poke it and i did and the lore master joined in and then we heard a shouty elf um <laughs> high elf minstrel come in too so i we we kicked troll butt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we thoroughly And then Pileaf wants to turn around and go away. I'm like, but, but we're here. <laughs> but, but, but. <laughs> so I kept going. We went out to, like, the fourth year of Minnesithal. Uh, <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> just because we were there anyway. Um <laughs> I, I know where they're going to send us back and we're going to be back and forth a couple of different times, but uh, you know, I, it was, it took me two months to get there. I wanted to do some exploring. <laughs> so yeah, we had, 
we had fun and kind of tried to finally fall over the place and he was really an unwilling uh accompl- accomplice and then and then it's it's funny because I'm watching my ra- I navigate by the radar I don't know how many people who else does this but I don't usually actually navigate by what my character is seeing I navigate by the radar which I don't know why I do it I must have learned to do it from something I would like I would love to say that it's what helped me through Moria, but really your radar is kind of useless in Moria. Um Moria, I well, I still kind of navigate by the radar in Moria. It's it's just weird. I spend more time looking at the radar and where the dots are than <laughs> because this way I can avoid the red dots and um than I do of where my character is. And so <laughs> I'm I'm watching the radar and I have my dot on it and well my you know your little red triangle and then the pine leaf dot is right next to me and Sans is an arrow <laughs> and it's Sans where are you? Because it's literally one of those situations where I turn around and she's gone because five seconds ago she was right here. <laughs> I was kind of still right there. But it's okay because Sans gets into less trouble wandering off on her own than Pineleaf does. Because of the two hobbits that Terry runs with, Pineleaf is definitely the tastier of the two. I do not know why t- Pineleaf is the really tasty hobbit, but Pineleaf is apparently a really tasty hobbit. Because we get we walk through, and it's funny because I've I've actually wa- witnessed this happen. The three of us will walk through on exactly the same spot. And if we get attacked, whatever's coming at us goes after Pine Leaf. Well, I have the tank. They're supposed to go after me. Yeah, but you're a <laughs> warden tank, so and and regardless, like any class for tanking, they don't just automatically pick the tank. You're supposed to use a skill for taunting. Um, well, yes. well, maybe and, they and, noticed that I have only two pointy objects and I have and, three. <laughs> well, no, because you have all those arrows in your quiver. So you've got oh, a, I've got a lot more than just three. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I only have two sharp objects. Technically, I have a bow and a quiver, but those are hidden. Well, yes, but you have this heavy armor that looks hard to eat through. That's true. <laughs> Plus, I'm the tall one. Your, your bite size is a snack. He's <laughs> too crunchy. <laughs> Pine leaf is snack size. Um, so yeah, that that's pretty much what I did this week. So, Sans, how about you? Well, I attended a play at the Frostbuth Bluff Theater and discussed it with Trish and Steve for their podcast, The Time That Is Given Us. Um, that was fun. I got to kind of look at the play again, and I haven't done that for a while. And then I killed lots of things in and around Minas Morgul and critiqued its layout. Um, (laughs) I'm pretty sure it fell because of its layout. Um, I mean, the the circles don't make you go full circles um, and crisscross back and forth and all the annoying things of Minas Tirith. But it's less annoying, so that was fun. And I almost died due to a bad pull and the burning aura of the thing that I decided to attack while also being attacked by something else. So, I got to use my Hobbit flop for the first time in a while, and then thought I was going to die anyway because of the burning aura that was standing right next to me. Uh, But it walked off at the last possible second, and uh, I was saved by Terry and Pineleaf's arrival. I don't know if they noticed how close I was to dead at that point, but it was pretty bad. Um, Because we had gotten to a place where the guy we needed to kill was being killed, and we tried to kill him, but we weren't fast enough to get a tap in, so we had to wait for him to respawn, and we didn't have any idea how many things were going to respawn while this guy was respawning. So, yeah, we ended up in the middle of a lot of angry mobs, and (laughs) I only had one mad at me, so I pulled it back towards my campfire that I had set up where we were waiting for the guy we were looking for, But, yeah, that one was pretty mad at me, and the guy was already back before I got to my campfire. So, oops. Um, but that, I don't think was the, I don't think that was the time that I disappeared on them. I think that time I stopped to wave to a kinney and, uh, 
then had trouble turning around to get back on the ramp because my computer decided that that was the perfect time for the game to freeze. So it was a very good adventure in Minas Morgul and dangerous, but not quite deadly. So very good. And I worked on leveling a new scholar and a new yeoman to take advantage of the crafting buffs. And my <laughs> my yeoman went from level 6 or 7 to level 22 and is not finished with the first six tiers of farming yet. So I don't think he's actually even taken advantage of any of the boosts because I'm not sure they affect... Uh, I don't know if they affect farming or not. Um, I'm sure they'll affect cooking when I start cooking, but that was my week. How was your week, Pine? I will start out with my main warden, the one on Krikala, who secured an entrance to Minas Morgul. In other words, did something very familiar to what we did in our group. And I also did pretty much all the stuff on the first Tier. I think that I did. I guess maybe half to two thirds of the stuff that has to be done on on the first tier in that, where we're trying to figure out what we're going to do about the about those two factions of orcs that are there. So we're take care taking care of all of that. Then during the field trip, we killed spiders and visited a really nasty disease infested swamp. Yeah, I guess you know which one I mean there. I got it. The Bloody Gore. Yeah, that one. Also known as my favorite place in Mordor. <laughs> <laughs> and on... true. Yeah, true. And then on Anor, I was questing in the brown lands, and my warden there faced a brigand captain. Now, when I first saw his name, I was saying, okay, that would be... Um, Hafok, and I was like, H-A-F-O-X, H-A-F-O-C, and I was going there pronouncing it that way. Then I'm at halfway to the camp, and it dawned on me, wait a minute. Rohir- when I do Rohiric, I usually pronounce things as Old English, and of course an F would be pronounced as a V between two vowels. So I just realized at this point that the name is Havoc. Oops. <laughs> that we have this brigand captain named Havoc, and I'm just, just laughing there because <laughs> what a perfect name for a brigand captain. <laughs> so I so, said, okay, let's bring some Havoc to Havoc, and all, all sorts of puns like that as I was going <laughs> into the brigand camp. <laughs> so that's what I was doing then uh, during my week in Lotro. We currently have 15 supporters on Patreon, and if you'd like to join this illustrious rate of players and help support local players, simply go to the donations page where you can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. And we did not receive any comments this week or emails this week, but if you'd like to send one, you can send it to podcast at lochaplayers.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the Players Alliance at Players Alliance, and Locha Players at Locha Players, Arandis at Arandis, Pony Fit, Pony Needles, Sense Winda at Sense Winda, and Terry Edwin at Terry Edwin. The Players Alliance has two shows on Mondays at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have DDO Players News, and on Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Locha Players News. You can join us for our shows at lochaplayers.com slash live. And that is all for tonight, and this is Polly Beatles reminding you to skirmish responsibly. <laughs> <laughs>